Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you, this time talking episode 22 of season 3 of The Flash, Infantino Street. Uh, of course, the name of this episode is a reference to uh, Carmine Infantino, who was a well-known uh, editor at uh, DC Comics back in the 60s, uh, really kind of brought The Flash into what uh, eventually became called the Silver Age, and uh, was one of the people who helped create a lot of uh, the important characters in The Flash, including Captain Cold. Um, so that was a nice little little nod to him. Mm. So let's kind of get right into what's going on in this episode. And of course, uh, the big shocker is that despite everything everybody does, it seems as if Savitar is indeed successful in murdering Iris. And... Now, this isn't the first time that uh, a major character has gotten killed right before the season finale, but I don't think that they're getting rid of Candace Patton. I don't think they're going to, like, you know, bring in, like, Earth 57 Iris or something like that in the future. I don't think that's what they're going to do. Um, this is just another example of it. It's, uh, it's always darkest before the dawn. So I, I think Team Flash is going to have some kind of a some kind of a trick up their sleeve, or more likely, they're going to think of some way to save Iris. Nonetheless, something something's definitely up. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I do have to give the show credit. Uh, you know, this is not what I expected to happen. It really was quite shocking. But again, there was still one more episode left, so something something clearly interesting is in the works. Um, and I think it was, it was very, very well handled. You know, everything that they do. I mean, it really, really looks until, like, the very end that everything's going to actually work this time. But then it just blows up in everybody's faces. I, I love the way that Savitar tricks HR into giving him the information on where Iris was. That's just, like, it's just such a simple trick, but it's understandable that it works. And, yeah, HR was kind of dumb for, uh, you know, giving Barry that information because, you know, of very clear that, yeah, under no circumstances must Barry know where Iris is. But, again, you know, it's a mistake, but it's a mistake you can understand him making. And uh, I do like what they've really done lately with HR. Uh, I mean, he's always been kind of fun. And his, you know, inferiority complex about not being a mega genius like the other heiress, Harrison Wells. I mean, that's always sort of been bubbling in the background. Um, but here it really does manifest. It's like, oh my god, I screwed up and I'm going to get Iris killed. And, you know, what do I really contribute to this team? I mean, what they're doing with Tracy, I mean, it really seems kind of rushed. But... Um, you know, it has done a lot to really sort of bring HR much more to the front and make him work a lot more as a character. But I think all of this really does read like they're gonna they're gonna use him uh, to uh, basically be the character that is gonna die, but for real, by the end of the next episode, because. Every season, Tom Cavanaugh gets to play a new character. And while I'm sure Earth 2 Harrison Wells might pop up occasionally, they're probably going to want to do uh, a new character, a new version of it, to be the main character for season four. And that really is probably only going to work if HR dies. Also, if HR dies, that kind of gives Tracy a lot more motivation to stay on Team Flash. I mean, uh, you know, she's officially welcomed by HR to the team this time around. She finds out who Barry really is, that Barry is the Flash. But have seeing an evil supervillain murder someone that she cared about, well, you know, that's that's even more compelling evidence. I mean compelling even an even more compelling reason to do these sort of things, to make sure that this doesn't happen to other people. And it being some sort of alternate version of Barry is going to create some very interesting tension for her. And as a member of Team Flash, you know, Barry did ultimately, in some reality, become the person that killed this person that she loved. Which is kind of a bit of a reverse of the whole women in refrigerators thing that some people have brought up in regards to what happened to Iris uh, this episode. Uh, my take on the whole women in refrigerators thing has always been that 
you know, it's a legitimate point. I mean, the basic idea is you kill a female character solely to develop the character of a male character. And uh, this is something, a term that was coined by uh, Gail Simone, a um, very talented writer, uh, who I've met. She's, I met her briefly. She's a very nice lady. I uh, love her work. Um, in reference to uh, the character uh, Alexander DeWitt getting killed in uh, Green Lantern. And in all fairness, yeah, that I think was a fair criticism. Now, as time went by, the stories did sort of go and more, do more with Alex as, as a character, kind of retroactively, but yeah, she was introduced, she wasn't around very long, and then she got killed. And it was basically sort of to really say, hey, superheroing is no joke to Kyle Rayner, who had just become Green Lantern. Um, but I, I think uh, in over time it's gotten to the point where people just sort of use that any time any female character is killed, which I think is not accurate. Because here, Iris's death, yeah, I mean, it's going to impact Barry the most, but again, the series is called The Flash. Barry is the main character. So everything is always going to rotate around Barry. He's the center of the show. But killing Iris also deeply affects everybody. Of course, it deeply affects Joe, uh, Cisco. Everybody cares about Iris. Right? This is going to break everybody's heart. So Iris' death is something that heavily impacts everyone, male and female on the show. So, yeah, that... Um, that seems a bit of an unfair criticism. I mean, even Killer Frost seems a little, a little unconcerned about, a little concerned about this. I mean, she even takes some time to give uh, Savitar that whole like, "Are you sure you really want to murder the woman you love?" So it's a little interesting to try and read that scene. Is this Killer Frost making sure Savitar's really up for this, or is this really just some aspect of Caitlin who? influencing Killer Frost. It's like, you know, I don't want my friend to be killed. It kind of reads a little bit more as the latter to me. Of course, Caitlin does end up, uh, Killer Frost does end up going into that big fight with Vi, and she even says, you know, I don't want to hurt you, I want to kill you. And, uh, you know, things are, uh, are are not looking too good for Cisco uh, last time we saw him, but uh, we'll see. Uh, interesting also that Trulian was nowhere to be found, but, uh, oh well, you know. Que sera, sera. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, definitely really love that moment, uh, that scene between Iris and Joe, where they kind of confess some secrets they've been keeping from each other. Uh, that was very nicely done. Uh, Jesse L. Martin and Candace Patton, so, so great those scenes. And, you know, I gotta say, I, once again, just how happy I am that they got Jesse Elmer on this show. I mean, I loved him for years on Law and Order. Uh, but here, having him get to be Joe is just so, so great. And again, you know, Captain Candace Patton doing a really, really great job. This is, this is really, like, in this episode, I think it's some of her best stuff ever as Iris. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I also like that we got to see a little bit of Savitar just sort of, you know, preparing for the battle. And, you know, him having that little conversation with Killer Frost, and even him, you know, so saying things like, explaining again why he's doing this. Of course, you can't help but wonder, it's like, okay, so what if Barry just says, like, okay, no more time remnants ever. Then again, Barry said no more time travel ever, and look what he did this episode. But yeah, you'd think that, you know, there would be other ways that he could sort of just make Savitar not exist, but Savitar did point out, it's like, hey man, even if you kill yourself, that's no guarantee that I won't be born anyway. I mean, look at it, which, again, valid point. But yeah, we got, uh, <clears throat> we got Captain Cold back in, uh, back in this episode, Wentworth Miller, great to see him again. And uh, I do like that Barry was smart enough to grab him out of the timeline from when he was with the Legends, and uh, thus would it have been more good inclined. And then uh, being in Russia at that time, wasn't that uh, when like the Tunguska thing happened, if I remember correctly? 
Uh, anyway, uh, recruiting uh, Captain Gold to pull off the heist, and that was cool. And I even loved how Snart is like, oh man, the Flash wants me to help him pull a heist. This is great. I, I'm so in. Uh, also, it was early in this episode, it was nice to see Cisco talk, have a talk with Lila, and Lila really rationally pointing out, like, yeah, Barry, you've given us epic reasons not to trust you, even after everything you've done. And I like how Barry is like, is, they're like, is this about the whole baby Sarah thing? And Lila does handles that pretty well. It's like, look, I can't lie and say that I don't wonder what it would be like to have a daughter, but, you know, no. So, I'm glad that they did that. That's a nice way of handling it. And I really do like that they are doing more with Lila. She's a cool character, and her being the head of Argus, I mean, it does really make sense that she should be a pretty major player uh, in uh, this universe. Um, nice uh, nice use of King Shark. And uh, I, I did like that uh, you know, they make, make us remind us that, hey, Grodd is a prisoner of Argus. You can see that little door with a cheetah written on it. Of course, uh, some obvious marketing for uh, for the Wonder Woman movie, which I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, the big fight battle at the, uh, the finale, that was really nicely done. I just couldn't help but laugh, though, when Barry whipped out that gun and started shooting Savitar with it because it looked so much like one of the proton packs from Ghostbusters. Um, and then, ultimately, it, it, it all turns out to, to be for nothing. Iris gets killed. Anyway, uh, so this just leaves us with the big question of well, how how is Barry going to save the day this time? Which, of course, is always where we are at this point in, in these episodes. Is how is Barry going to save, save the day this time? Which is exactly what uh, the show should be doing. And uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, next time. You know, these things, it's, uh, you know, you have to let Barry save the day, but then in the final minutes, you've got to uh, got to give some kind of a twist to make people like, ooh, next season's going to be good. So, um, that's where we are, folks. I am so, so looking forward to seeing how this all wraps up uh, next week. It's going to be really cool. Uh, with that said, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi, and please also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.